um, observing actors, for example, the different movies they make and how there are recurring themes in those movies. And so kind of using an actor's career as a way to read uh, the collective consciousness, you know, what's going on there. I say trivial because if it focuses too much on the products themselves and just mapping all of the things and saying, oh, look, Jim Carrey was green in this movie and he was green in that movie, so Jim Carrey's the <laughs> green man, you know? But <laughs> And then that leaves kind of a lot of room for interpretation there. I mean, it's different from what I do in Secret Life movies, which is just use movies as, as a launching point to go deeper into into the psyche and my own psycho psychology specifically. I although the book isn't autobiographical, it may as well be, because reading it back I see how I was uncovering so many different patterns in my own psyche that I didn't even know about at the time. I just thought I was writing about movies and and yes, you know, exploring the collective psyche. But I wasn't aware of actually uncovering patterns and wounds in my own psyche at the time. It's it's a no-brainer because why else would I be attracted to those movies? But actually the realization that that was what I was doing didn't come until just recently when the book was being published and I, I realized actually in a way this is kind of the most honest book that I've written. It's the most complete sort of expression of, of where I'm at and yet when I first wrote it 10 years ago, it was just a book about movies. So that's sort of a mystery in itself. It's like this book is a book about how everything has an unconscious, including products. You know, movies have an unconscious. Well, my own book has it. It's unconscious. So there's many, many layers. Well, I think that's all the time we have today, Jason. I'd like to thank you very much for coming on Aeon Bite and talking about your uh, wonderful book and ideas. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, if I could direct our listeners to my website, that would be nice. Certainly, okay. certainly. Please do. It is going to be a hard one for people, so I'll spell it. It's aeoluscapus.com, which is A-E-O-L-U-S-K-E-P-H-A-S dot com and I'm just putting the website together now hopefully by the time this airs it will be up but this will have information about the um, group that I'm running which is about existential detective work and exploring mythic narratives so it, it does tie into what we've been talking about but it's, it's a practical application of this, of this um, knowledge uh, in people's daily lives and um, I also have a blog Vagabond Blues which you can just Google, Jason Horsley, Vagabond Blues, um, and a couple of podcasts, which you'll be able to find easily uh, just by going to that site. Well, thank you very much, Jason, and uh, have yourself a good day now. Thanks, Miguel. And there you have it, my beloved true seekers, Jason Horsley, on the dire straits of humanity's collective consciousness. From his absorbing book, The Secret Life of Movies, schizophrenic and shamanic journeys in American cinema. I don't know if Jason has his website up as you listen to this, but please check out his blog, movieblues.blogspot.com. And don't forget to download Aeon Byte number 12, our guest, which was actually Jason when he went by the name Jake, and Aeon Bite number 50 with Eric Wilson for an encyclopedia and sage wisdom of Gnostic cinema that includes more of the Matrix and Fight Club, as well as the Truman Show, Dark City, The Thirteenth Floor, The Gnosis of David Lynch and Philip K. Dick, and so much more. And this whole synchromysticism movement sounds very piquant. Paranoia comes from the Greek for beyond the mind. And in a sense, that's what we true seeker warriors are attempting to do. And being paranoid sometimes just means you've been paying attention the entire time. In the desert of the real, the mirages vanish if we focus with a little bit of effort and a bravery of awareness. 
and I believe the whole program can be surmised by one simple saying from the Gospel of Thomas, Logia number 7. If you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what is within you will destroy you. And in the end, we are the ones who must become the directors and actors of our own movies, learning from the Gnostic Gospels in their movie incarnations. Like William Blake wrote, a man must create his own system or be ruled by another man's system. And like I say, you must write your own gospel and live your own myth, or else the Lucas and Camerons of the cosmos laugh all the way to the bank with the spiritual capital that belongs to you. And we are the Gnostics, those veterans of a thousand psychic wars who have set the controls to the heart of the sun. We are the sailors on the seas of fate between the gnashing rocks of orthodoxy all the way to the farthest shores of imagination. We are the revenge of the myth and the justice of Bina against Jehovah and his angelic mafia. We are the ones who run with those searching for the truth and avoid those who have found it. We are champion eternal and the heroes with a thousand faces, but one real divine identity. We are the Gnostics. I am, and I am Abraxas, broadcasting at the virtual Alexandria through the God above God that can. The road is ended, the song is over. Thought I'd have something more to say. But don't cultivate any troubles, my beloved true seekers. Because like heaven above you, the spy that loved you, I'm keeping all of your secrets safe with me tonight. Hello and goodbye as always.